Okay, so I've changed my hardware setup a little bit here. I have uh, rubber banded my Arduino board onto a breadboard. And this is kind of nice because it keeps the two together. I can only show you part of my breadboard because of the resolution of the camera. It goes on uh, quite a bit further than you can see on the camera. But again, using the breadboard is useful because you can do things like what I'm about to do now. So what I'm about to do now is I'm gonna put a, a wire, actually I want my black wire. I'm gonna take my black wire and I'm gonna put that into ground. Now with that wire, I'm gonna go ahead and bring that wire down here onto the negative side of the breadboard. Actually, maybe I'll put it over on this side. Let's put it over on this side. All right, so what does that do for me? Well, what that does is that now it brings ground to that rail. And if I wanna ground other things, like an LED, for example, I can go ahead and take a, another shorter wire. I can go ahead and drop it here right next to ground. Then bring it up somewhere there. And then I can take my LED. And remember my LED has got two sides. One's a little bit longer and one's a little bit shorter. So the shorter side is the side that needs to go in with the ground. And then I want one of the digital pins to go to the pin next to the power side of the LED. So I can grab another wire. I can pick any of the digital pins. I'll go ahead and pick 11, just in case I wanna do analog rights instead of just digital rights. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this down here. Next to the power part of the LED. Okay, so that's just one part of my setup here. Uh, the next part of my setup is I wanna use analog read as well as analog write. To use analog read, I need something that does an analog read. And I just happen to have such a device here. If you're wondering where most of my little devices came from, this is a photo sensor, a light sensor. I went to my local Radio Shack and I bought for, I think, $50, a tackle box full of transistors and resistors and a speaker and, the, and this and a microphone. So some sort of cool stuff, okay? So I wanna use this as well. Now this is gonna require just a little bit more in terms of hardware configuration. Let me go ahead and put that here over on the other side. And you can see that the sides are separated by a little ridge and that helps me keep things separate here. All right, now I've got my photo sensor plugged in there. Now I, I said I'm gonna need another piece here to go with the photo sensor. And the piece that I need is a resistor. Now I need a uh, resistor to turn the voltage that's going to power the photo sensor to turn that back into volts, into an analog signal that the Arduino board can understand and feed back to me. So I need uh, one of these. I'll go ahead and plug it into my board.
So what the resistor is going to need on one side is a ground. So again, I can use the rail here. I don't have to hook up another ground to the board. And then I need um, two more wires. One wire is going to power the photocell, and the other is going to report back to the board the signal from the power photo cell. So let's go ahead and set up the power first. I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a pin into the five volts. And I'm gonna go ahead and power this side of the photo cell and then on the other side but be between the rail and the resistor I'm gonna hook up something back into one of the analog inputs so let's go ahead and do that in green and make sure that that is in analog input zero great okay so after all that i've got my little experiment set up so let's do the simple part first the simple part is i'm going to create a new sketch i'm going to call it analog input with breadboard and you can see how once you start doing things that are a little bit more complicated, having a breadboard is pretty useful. Otherwise, I would have had to do a lot of soldering or weird taping or something to get all this to work together. Let's write the code. The first thing I'm going to do is set up some constants. So the input constant, uh, I'll say analog input, is going to be equal to zero. Um, the constant for the LED is going to be equal to 11. And then I'm going to create another constant. These are all ints. Which is limit. So what's going to happen is the analog input is going to provide me somewhere between 0 and 1024. The question is, even when the photo cell is completely hidden from the light, it's not going to necessarily go down to zero because um, there's just electricity going through it, right? There's five volts. So it's not going to go down to zero. It's going to just go down further. So you have to kind of experiment with this. And actually, this is again where the serial um, dot right line can really come into play. I'm going to go ahead and do a setup here. And the only thing I need to do up in setup is to say pin mode LED is equal to output. Here I'm going to do a loop. And in the loop, what I'm going to do is say int red value equals to analog read. And that is the analog input. I'm going to go back to the setup. Sorry, I need to do one more thing here. I need to say serial.begin 9600 because I want to show you first before I do anything else is that value. So I'm going to go ahead and do a serial.print value is serial.print line read value and that's all I'm going to do, except for I'm going to do a delay for about two seconds. Again, otherwise, it's just going to happen over and over and over so fast, it's going to be hard to see. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and upload the sketch. 
I'm going to go ahead and open up the serial monitor. And you can see right now the value is 321, 233. It's varying a little bit. If I shine a flashlight on the photo cell, this should go up. And it's not going up. So the the issue is I've done something wrong in my setup, something wrong in terms of the hardware. And notice that the um, analog in is still getting uh, values. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look and see what I've done wrong here. So what I've done wrong is that uh, this little cord here, this wire that's doing the analog input is in the wrong row. It needs to be over one more row. And actually, pardon me, I need to turn on my flashlight in order to get in there. All right. So we've got power coming in. We've got the photo cell. We've got the resistor. That's hooked up to ground. The LED is hooked up to digital pin and the ground. Okay. So this is the kind of thing that happens as you're working with Arduino. I don't mind showing you that I did that wrong. It's kind of hard for me to see because of the angle of the breadboard as I'm trying to show it to you. Okay. Let me go ahead and open up the serial monitor again. Okay. So we're getting a much higher value. And notice when I put my finger over the photo cell, I'm getting a much lower value. So when it's getting light, it's up over 400, 500. When it's not getting light, it's down to 100 or 200. And again, notice if I shine a flashlight on this, my value goes up and up and up. Okay, so what is the point of this? Well, the point of this would be if the value that's being reported by the photo cell is less than 300, I know that it's dark. If the value being reported by the photo cell is more than 300, I know that it's light out. I'm going to light up an LED based upon that, but you can imagine there are a number of other things that you could do based upon light being shown. Right? You could have this hooked up to a motor shield, and the motor shield could open up your curtains. So you could have an Arduino, the Arduino could be hooked up to a motor, the motor hooked up to your curtains, and whenever it is light out, uh, the curtains open, whenever it's dark out, the curtains close, or vice versa, whatever you'd like. So what I'm going to do here is just put in a simple if statement. So I'm going to say if read value is greater than limit. We know uh, the um, we are getting light. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the LED um, for just uh, a moment. So I'm going to say analog right LED, and I'm going to turn it on at about I don't know 100, not completely fully bright, and then I'm going to do another delay so that we see that the light is turned on. So let me go ahead and upload this sketch again. And so you can see that the LED is on. Uh, that means that we must be getting um, light. And if I go ahead and put my finger over it, of course, I forgot to put in the else. So let's put in the else. And here, let's put in an analog right LED zero to turn it off. And um, so we don't actually don't need the else in that case. So I'm going to go ahead and upload that sketch. So you can see that the light is turned on for about two seconds. And then if I put my finger over, the photo cell, no light, no LED. Take my finger off. 
we have light, we have an LED. Okay, this is a very simple example. Again, the two sort of new things that we learned here are about the breadboard and about using the breadboard. And again, you saw I put the wire in the wrong hole, something that could happen to you, something to look out for. Um, that's, again, why I always have the serial print lines in so that if something isn't happening, I can sort of monitor what's actually happening in the code and see whether it's the code or my hardware setup. In that case, it was my hardware setup. Also, the idea of the analog read and be able to read input from sensors that are variable, not just on or off, but um, variable sensors, and be able to take that data and then do something else with it. Again, the breadboard makes prototyping these kinds of things uh, much, much simpler.